Hello, and thank you for being here. In today's edition, in our very first edition, uh, going through credit, credit repair, credit understanding, we have brought in an expert, Devin Norcross from Norcross Credit Repair. We've worked with them for many, many years. Their company has outstanding ratings. And frankly, the customers which have done business with them have absolutely loved them. And today, we're probably going over one of the most important topics, which is why do credit scores vary amongst what you see online, what you hear from your credit card statement, what you get from Credit Karma, and all the di different sources out there. Hi, I'm David from the Cram Group here at Home Mortgage Alliance. And so let's go right to it. De Devin, help us understand why credit has been so confusing to folks and why there's so much noise out there relative to credit scores. Yeah, absolutely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share a couple slides. These are slides uh, regarding presentations I give around the country, and they're going to really help us outline, you know, what what's going on, really where the confusion is taking place. Okay, mm -hmm. let me let, let me start here. Give me one second to move some of this stuff around. All right. So the re what we're really identifying here is that the credit bureaus do not track your credit score. When people think of their credit scores, think I have three credit scores, and that's because they think about having three credit bureaus. You mm -hmm. got to keep in mind that your credit score is the combination of two different companies coming together, or really four, and we'll, we'll break that down. But um, the credit bureau is just a data collection firm. There's lots of credit bureaus out there. The, the three largest are TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. There's one called LexisNexis that we use frequently. A lot of landlords use that. Government agencies to check, um, uh, you know, people's background history. Um, you know, is anyone a title company is going to work with LexisNexis to see if you have any outstanding judgments or property liens, things of that nature. Now. They've been around a long time. Equifax opened in 1899. It's a huge company. It's uh, 14,000 wow. employees strong. And, uh, you know, they, again, they, they, they created data, a, a list of data and housed information, and they, they sold those lists. But they didn't really interpret that data. They didn't really quantify that data for loan worthiness. They didn't apply algorithms to generate risk models. Uh, that's done by scoring agencies. So if you, if you look at this map here, what we have is you as an individual, you apply for a loan to a lending institution. A lending institution wants to know what's on your credit, how much debt do you have, what kind of mistakes have you made? And then they also are gonna ask a scoring agency to make an interpretation of your loan worthiness. Uh, FICO or Fair Asset Corporation is who they're gonna use to do that. So David, if we look at a credit report, we would see, and I could possibly bring one up, but we'll just talk about it. We would see the credit bureau data, and we'd also see the FICO scoring agency's interpretation of that data in relation to their scoring model and their credit score. Now, FICO makes specific models based off what industry you're looking for. So if you want an auto loan or a mortgage loan or a credit card, you're going to use different FICO scoring models as we see here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And your scores can heavily, heavily vary based on the exact same credit bureau, just, just depending on what mortgage model or I'm sorry, what FICO models being used to calculate that mm -hmm. score. If you've had a repossession, it probably means you're going to have a lower credit score on an auto FICO model than versus a foreclosure. Okay. Now, as a lender, you might also say, hey, I just want the credit bureau data, but I don't care about the scoring agency. And when would you do that? You would do that right before you closed a loan, right? You're going to see, hey, I just want to see, are there new debts on there? We are. And, and that's what they call a soft pull. Uh, yes, that's going to be a soft pull. You're not incorporating the, the, the scoring agency data. Sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. So just keep in mind there is your credit bureau data. And that data can be interpreted in many different ways, depending on the scoring agency. Okay. Now, if we look at this slide, what we see is, again, as I mentioned, your different FICO scoring models. This is drafted from a website called myfico.com, M-Y-F-I-C-O. Now, I work with my clients through the MyFICO site on a daily basis mm -hmm. to help them understand what their exact mortgage scores are to see if it's time for the CRAM group to go ahead and repull credit or if maybe we still need to do a little work. Okay, so it's a great, great site. Anyone who's preparing for a mortgage loan or an auto purchase, they want to know kind of where they're at, they want to come here. Uh, my wife, her, in, uh, her lease is ending. We're buying that lease out. So we actually went to myfico.com. We saw what her highest automotive FICO score was. We found a credit union locally that takes that bureau because auto loans aren't worked through as such as mid scores. And we're financing through that uh, that credit union, we're actually getting a better interest rate than the dealership was able to provide us. So, oh, yes. 
When you go to myfico.com, the most important step is you don't settle with the scores on the home page. The home page looks like this. Anyone who does go there, it's very important. If this is for mortgage needs, make sure and come down here where this orange arrow is and click on mortgages. That's going to give you your mortgage scores. The home page will house the FICO 08 scores, similar to like you would get through mint.com app or my Capital One or my Discover card give me these. It's not a mortgage based model. Now, what happens is, is people go and they check their credit at places that don't provide mortgage FICO models. The number one place that we would run into this is like Credit Karma, right? Uh, two thirds of American uh, Americans uh, over 18 years old have a Credit Karma account. They've had a uh, phenomenal success penetrating uh, their market share and you know everyone's getting it. Now the, the, the Credit Karma app uses a model called a Vantage Score model. Vantage Score is a competitor to FICO. Now, what we have here are four different Vantage score models. Now, FICO has many different models. The most recent mortgage model we have is FICO 4. It came out in 2004, 17 years ago. We have not had an updated mortgage model since then. We have come out with FICO 08, FICO 9, and subsequently FICO 10. None of them are used in the mortgage space. But what we do see are some really common threads between the Vantage model and the FICO model. Over time, what they are all starting to see, what their, what their research is reporting, what their models reflect, is that certain items that we used to penalize borrowers heavy for are not really an indicator of loanworthiness. So they're not necessarily penalizing them anymore. Mm -hmm. So to summarize kind of where all the four Vantage models and the new three FICO models are heading, smaller collections, paid collections, medicals under say 500, and in the case of Vantage, collections that you just received, are not penalized at all. Vantage says, hey, we can give you six months to even know that you have a collection. And once yeah. you pay it, we're not going to penalize you anymore. Hmm. So if I go eight, nine, and 10, again, no penalty for paid collections. Uh, now the problem comes in is, is the advice you get in some of these monitoring sites. If you pay this credit card or this collection down by X to, to zero, your score will go up by 22 points. But the mortgage models and the auto models are pre-recession models have it reflected that yeah and they had they, yeah. they haven't updated that and they weight collections based off what we call the data last activity how old is that collection the more recent that collection is the more it weighs and the data last activity can also be updated by you making a payment mm -hmm. so, so david let me ask you have you ever seen someone pay a collection trying to prepare for their mortgage loan and their credit score goes down all the time all the time yeah. and we we advise them if we talk to them early enough to not do that because you're absolutely right. It, it's like refreshing a bad thing and all of a sudden a bad thing, even though you did the right thing by paying it off, ends up being a negative impact on, on your score. Yeah. So yeah. what would happen here is if we went back to this previous slide mm -hmm. and uh, is this individual, let's say that they had a paid collect or an unpaid collection from four years ago and they paid it and then we waited for this to update some of these models, like the mortgage model, would show a decrease in their score, and some would show an increase. And it just has the differences in, in these models. Um, you know, the federal government feels this way with their home loans. I and mean, if we look at what HUD, which would you know, probably let you describe, what, 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 what HUD loans what, would you qualify as HUD loans? Well, yeah, so you know, things like FHA loans are, are, are one which is certainly a, a very common loan, especially for, for a lot of first-time home buyers. Yeah, it is, we do, I work a lot in rural areas. We do USDA. We've got some great <laughs> veterans programs. Yep. You know, they they kind of say the same thing. They say, you know, we don't need some of these. We don't need a good portion of these medicals paid. Or or if they are medicals or non medicals, if they're non medicals and they're paid, we can have them in a dispute status. We know that if it's in dispute, it doesn't calculate against you. So where they're saying, we don't care if that's changing the credit score because we know through our research that it doesn't impact their likelihood of paying back a loan. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, you know, everyone's kind of on the same page there. Um, but yeah, this is really what I want to go through here is just to help people understand, you know, you have your credit bureaus on one side and they're just your data. And then you have different agencies that calculate that data and an algorithm that outputs a score. And there's different algorithms that can be used for that. So you don't have three credit scores. You have lots and lots of credit scores. If you want to see what your credit score is, you can go to myfico.com. If you want to have David pull your credit and see what your loan worthiness is, it's going to incorporate your credit bureau data, your, your scoring agency, mm -hmm. and then your debt to income data. And then that's how David's going to be able to figure out what kind of you know loan ceiling or pre-approval can he offer you. And of course, and you know, 
days like this with, with low inventory, it's, we want to maximize that loan ceiling as much as possible. Absolutely. And, and I, I re really appreciate you saying that because that's been a real critical factor for us uh, is to, to make sure that the credit worthiness, the debt to income, that the loan structure is in place because all offers, as you say, are, are going very, very fast. They are. They are. Well, Devin, I, I appreciate you being here. Um, I, I know, know we've got another one of these uh, set up. We'll plan on uh, trying to get that posted next, next week. Uh, continue our discussion on, on credit, uh, credit related topics. I think one of the next things which I'm hoping uh, we, you know, which we can touch on because we got a lot of questions about this, how to clear up collections, which we know are impacting the, their the individual score yes. and kind of you know, perhaps maybe describe what a part of your process is on that. Yeah, I'll touch on that. So uh, 15 years I've been in the credit pair debt settlement space. Um, we are here to help people improve their credit through whatever channels we have available to us. Sometimes that's writing letters to the credit bureaus to contest items using uh, policies set forth by the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's a simple negotiation between us and the creditor, where we're asking the creditor to reduce their balance to an acceptable and a reasonable amount, but also agree to eliminate the credit reporting. There is no law that states that they have to take items off your credit report when you pay it, they just have to take the balance off. So if we can negotiate as part of our process and then remove all collection history, that's what we're going to seek to do. Yeah, because at the end of the day, if I understand it right, a collection company isn't really a, they're sort of beat up your credit. They're just there to get paid, mm -hmm. right? So, 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 so to some extent, it sounds like, like you're using that uh, for-profit motive, which that company has to collect on those funds to yeah. help your consumer. Absolutely. So the, the biggest piece of advice I have for consumers is if you're thinking about working on your credit or fixing your credit, don't do anything different. Don't stop paying any bills. Don't start paying any bills. Very true. Get a consultation. It's a free consultation. Get a consultation. Dave can get you in touch with me. Um, you know, there's a lot of information that is learned in that consultation that we may never need to be working clients together, but we also might bring some invaluable information to you. Yeah. And in, and in all of our years of, of Stephanie and I being in this business, we have yet to find uh, any company that, that responds and does as good a job as Devon's and his team do. So Devon, I thank you for being here today. I look forward to our next credit discussion. It'll be great. I as well. Have a good day. Talk to you soon. Thanks. You too.